I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 10th of November, 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. And today is Thursday. I just did a lot of work today. Gonna make it a real quick about the day. We just had work, and this evening we went out to eat, all of us with Alan and Anna and the crew, and we went out to uh, Food Rock Ave, where we got pizza and burgers and stuff. And that's really our day. Today I'm gonna be talking about our topic, which is why is it so hard to find uh, rental properties in Ponoloya and Las Penitas, the beaches of Leon? But first, please take a moment to like and subscribe. If you have any questions that come up during this video or you have any comments you'd like to make, love it if you put those below because that's how we get the discussion going and we got such a great community here. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee. I'm gonna have a link to that in the description, but I've been asked to put that right down here. This is, I'm doing a hand motion to remind myself to actually put it there when I'm watching the video. Uh, because some people, you know, when you're watching on TV or whatever, it doesn't pop up. So that's how you can do that. And of course, share on social media, pop this on Facebook or whatever, and that makes a really big difference. And on to today's topic, because a number of people have asked me this over the year or so, and recently it came up specifically, someone was looking for a place for their family in Las Pinitas, specifically, but Ponoloy, of course, is very close. For those who are not aware, the city of Leon, the way that it works in Nicaragua, each of the departments has a capital city. That's not a surprise. Generally, the department and the capital city have the same name. Each city or department, it depends a little bit, has associated beaches. In the case of Managua, they are the Managua beaches. In the case of uh, Rivas, they are simply known as the Rivas beaches, but they are a huge area with San Juan del Sur being the major one, but there's lots of them, including Popoyo, for example. Uh, and in Chinandega, because the area is so large and the city is so small, there are a set of Chinandega beaches like Corinto, but farther north, there are some uh, beaches that are considered to be El Viejo beaches, even though El Viejo is a part of Chinandega. In Leon, there are two beaches that are considered the Leon beaches. They are both in the department and actually in the metro area of the city. So they're very closely associated. To make it even more convoluted for you guys, um, but to show how close these are, Leon is actually a binary city. Two cities that have merged into one, Leon and Subtiava. Subtiava is the one on the west, and actually the beaches are part of that, but no one refers to it, partially because it's hard to say, but also because everyone knows Leon, and they don't realize that there's a second city in there. Often people just think Subtiava is a barrio in the west. It is much like Dallas and Fort Worth. I've mentioned this before, Subtiava being like Fort Worth. The beaches, however, aren't just associated with Subtiava. They're actually part of its it's a uh, uh, incorporated zone. So technically your Alcadia or mayor's office is the one in Subtiava. There's also an additional mayor's office in Las Penitas and in Ponoloya, which is super confusing because Las Penitas and Ponoloya are the name of beaches. Ponoloya is the name of the barrio and Subtiava is the known as is the city in which that barrio resides, but everyone refers to it as part of the greater Leon zone, Leon zone. And so what thing you're in gets really confusing and people who live there often are unable to really express it. What we normally say is that you live in Las Penitas, Ponoloya, Leon. But if you want to be really specific, you're in Las Penitas, Ponoloya, Subtiava, Leon, or possibly Ponoloya, Ponoloya, Subtiava, Leon. It's a lot to try to figure out, but there's only one Ponoloya, there's only one Las Penitas in Nicaragua. That's all you actually need. Now, within that they are, like I said, one tiny metro area of about six to 7,000 people uh, out there on the beach. Ponoloya is the older northern beach and Las Pinitas is the younger southern beach. Ponoloya is roughly colonial and grew in popularity during the early 1900s, the early 20th century. Las Pinitas grew up much more recently and is traditionally the indigenous zone of the beach. So the land in Ponoloya is primarily held in deeds whereas the land in Las Pinitas is primarily held in leases from the indigenous community, which is not a problem, especially if you're renting, but even if you're owning down there, it is not really a problem. People will give you doom and gloom about how you shouldn't you know, invest in leased land, and that's, that's completely a crock. Uh, there's very strong legal protections. It is a standard system. It is how it works throughout much of the world. Very few places anywhere let you have primo beach zones without it being leased. The United States is different in most areas than that, but not all. And some places like Canada, it's always crown land. So if you start saying you shouldn't use uh, leased land, um, in any cases, there are entire really good countries that get ruled out completely because you don't like the way that they handle property. And I understand why it feels bad that that's how they handle property. 
honestly, as a resident of Las Penitas, I prefer the lease system because I want to know that at least at some time in the future, places that have been abandoned will revert to the community rather than being held in perpetuity by someone who simply doesn't care. That's a problem that a lot of these regions have. You end up with foreign investors who buy things and never return and actually eventually forget about it, but there's no mechanism to return those things to the government. At a 99-year lease, at least if your children abandon the property and don't realize they have it and let it go for generations, eventually the country will be able to reclaim it and the people who live here in Nicaragua will be able to use it again. They don't just lose it and have their country destroyed because of weird paperwork problems. And it doesn't hurt anyone because anybody who actually cares can come down and sell it, renew it, whatever. Nobody loses their spot, their, their spaces on the beach because of the 99 year lease who haven't abandoned it or done something illegal. So that's kind of the, the feeler of, of what these beaches are. Um, they are the second largest beach zone in the country, meaning San Juan del Sur is the largest, most active beach. Like, it's the most tourist traffic. The Las Bonitas Ponaloya zone is number two, as far as we know. And this makes sense. San Juan is the giant historic port of entry. It actually has a customs and, and everything office. Las Bonitas does not have that, but it is the only set of beaches that are actually in a city. Everything else is at arm's length from their cities. But these beaches are inside the Leon zone, and Leon is the second biggest city in the country. So they have a lot of things going for them that other places don't but our question is why is it so hard to find a rental that you want in these towns and that's what i want to explain so there's a bunch of things you have to understand here and one of them is how nicaraguans traditionally use the beach traditionally if you want to go to the beach and you live in nicaragua you want to go to the beach regularly your family would buy a place on the beach they would build a beach house there a nicaraguan beach house is typically not air conditioned has very few amenities is attractive and cute sits on the beach has enough for you to sleep in hammocks or small bedrooms and is mostly just open air a bathroom enough spots to wash up do some light cooking and then just lots of open space for playing some baseball, relaxing in the yard, barbecuing, or heading out to the beach, or whatever. A few of the places will have pools, but not that many. It's a very casual kind of country weekend kind of thing, even though it's on the beach. You may have places where people bring in loads and loads of beer and throw big parties, but in general, it's very chill. These places are often held by families for generations and generations. It is traditional to get one and hold on to it forever. You do not expect to sell it. You also have a land problem in Nicaragua with inheritance where pretty typically when a family uh, matriarch or patriarch passes away, their children, all of their children receive a piece of the property. Nothing particularly wrong with that, but it makes it automatically extremely difficult to sell those properties unless everybody agrees. And in many cases, you can't even get everyone together, let alone getting them to agree. So, and it's not a traditional thing to unload properties. It's simply not part of the culture. In America, if this was to happen, it would be pretty easy to get five siblings together and say, oh, we're gonna sell this for $100,000. We're all gonna get $20,000 instead of nothing, which is what we have today, and everyone would be on board. Here in Nicaragua, you will generally get someone who wants to hold on to the property or some number of people who want to hold on to the property and have no interest in the money whatsoever. And you'll often have one or two people who simply can't be bothered to respond and participate in the process. If you do get everyone to participate in the process, you'll have one or two people who are like, let's sell it at a market value. And a couple of people who are like, we want to hold out for the Hail Mary and hope that a crazy foreigner pays us 10 times what it's worth. We will hold on to it for forever for the aforementioned reasons. None of them paid for it because it's inherited, so they don't feel the pressure of needing to get rid of it because they've never seen that money in any way whatsoever. They're not dependent on it. So existing houses tend to stay empty or get used lightly by the families that own them with little opportunity for someone to come in and invest in it. So there's a lot of houses on the beach. When you drive through, you will say, wow, there's so many houses. I could rent any one of these. None of them seem to be in use. They'll definitely rent to me. No, that's often not the case. It is true that being able to rent one is far easier than being able to buy one. You only need to get people to agree to one weekend or a month or whatever, and then you're okay to rent it. So that is plausible, but buying is extremely hard. You have to get a lot of things organized and a lot of paperwork cleared in order to do that. And that's fine. Just be aware that that is how things work. So that takes the majority of the properties right off. There's also a lot of empty spaces, often owned by families for the same reasons, just no development because they aren't sure who owns it and no one has the money to build 
but they don't necessarily want to sell it because what if they have that money later in life or their children have it? So they often hang on to it because it's a form of inheritance that they pass on. It's family, familiar wealth, and that's how they handle it generation to generation. Uh, so you find a lot of spaces are simply fallen apart or wild land, and they may stay that way for a really long time. Uh, you also then have properties where people have come in, managed to get them, and are investing in them because like I described these houses, not very many expats who come in or wealthy, younger, uh, say, Monoguans who come in when they manage to get that land or manage to get that old house, often they're not that happy with that house. It's not what they're looking for. It's a different cultural thing, right? Especially North Americans don't tend to want an open air concrete structure on the beach. They want something fancy and enclosed in glass and air conditioned, especially if they're only visiting once in a while. So when you do manage to have spots that are acquired by expats, they tend to come in and rebuild them as very large, very expensive, uh, modern properties on the beach, which can be beautiful, but this means that the kinds of rentals that are available on the beach tend to be concrete bunkers that are open air and not what someone is looking for, or really expensive, larger structures that only make sense if you're looking for something very luxury and probably not for a long time or have extremely deep pockets. Finding that in-between property that would be what we expect as North Americans to be what we would use on the beach all the time, extremely difficult simply because the structures you want don't exist and the total number of properties available isn't very high. That's the biggest thing. Because of all the reasons I listed, the actual number of physical buildings that you could rent if someone was willing to rent them to you isn't that numerous. Now, Las Penitas, which is the more desirable beach uh, by a little bit, um, has many fewer. Ponaloya being older, just it's a larger physical beach zone. It's two houses or two lots deep against the sand before the road. And then there's a spot on the other side of the road. So it's three buildings deep going nearly the entire length of the beach. Whereas uh, Las Penitas, which is roughly the same size beach, they really are similar, uh, is only one lot deep against the beach. When it gets narrow, it gets far narrower than Ponaloya ever does and gets down to barely one, uh, one building deep along the bend, as it's called in in South Beach, Las Benitas. Uh, and then it has the estuary. Ponaloya then goes up around its estuary and Las Benitas kind of does not. So it really drops off. So the total number of possible building lots in Las Benitas is at best about two thirds that of Ponaloya, maybe half, but probably closer to two thirds because in a lot of it's just empty, right? And in Ponaloya, it tends to be pretty densely built but very old structures and often very old family money. Rentals do exist. They are highly desired by everybody. And so if one was to come up on the market, typically rent, people rent it for years. And so some of the best ones disappear from the market very quickly and you'll never find out about them because they're already well leased for a long time. So that's kind of the mechanics of what's going on. That doesn't mean you shouldn't look. It doesn't mean you shouldn't get your hopes up and give it a try, but be aware that finding rentals on the beach is going to be very difficult. And because of that, the rental market is a little bit inflated. Often people will pay far more than you would expect for the rental property simply because nothing exists. And that's what they're looking for. You can, of course, stay in hotels if you're doing that for several days or a week. Not a problem. If you're looking to stay for a really long time and you want to be able to do your own cooking and all that, it's going to start being a problem. Problem. There are some hostels like Caracolito where you could theoretically stay for a long time and some people do, but it's hostel living. While a nice hostel with really nice people, it still is not likely to be what you're looking for. And that's where it gets difficult. So what's the solution? One is lots of investors should come in and build things for rent. That's a plausible answer, but it's not a quick one and not going to solve your problems, whoever it is that's watching this video. What you need to do is either hunt around in Las Benitas and Ponaloya and look really carefully and jump on anything that seems like it's going to work. Uh, honestly, living there, I don't know of any properties that really work. That's how difficult it is. Um, and uh, uh, when something does come up, typically it's a house that they're, they're trying to sell and they're just renting it until it sells. The thing that's more practical is simply realizing that staying on those beaches long term is not plausible. Uh, and if you really want to be in that zone, then you're probably going to want to stay in Leon proper or Sutiaba, of course, uh, which is all one city. 
there there are lots of rentals in all kinds of price ranges all kinds of sizes it's a safe city and the distance from the city to the beach is about 17 17 kilometers so if what you want to do is be on the beach quite a bit of the time it's not that hard the city bus will take you out there for less than 50 cents it does take a bit of your day it's not hard to do it's easy to spend your day on the beach and then come back if that's really something that matters that much to you uh and if you don't want to go out every day then it's really good because you get all the city resources by being in the city and just use the beach when it makes sense and uh, if you do want to take a taxi out there the lowest price right now is 350 cord a normal is about 400 cord and sometimes at night it's gonna be about 500 that's ten dollars twelve dollars and about fifteen dollars depending on what you have going on and uh that's kind of why there isn't very much and everybody asks me the same question why can't i find anything out on the beach and it's not that there aren't things for sale there's a lot for sale it's not that there aren't a lot of beautiful spots that you may want if you could get them um, but people who, if we live on the beach and we were wanting to buy one of the houses, we would expect it to easily take six to 12 months or more, but six to 12 being reasonable to track down the interested parties, get them to communicate and find out whether or not we could buy a house on the beach. It doesn't mean we would be able to buy it only that within six to 12 months, we would reasonably know that the answer would be yes or no, assuming we came to a price uh, agreement. That's how complicated it is. So. When you're saying looking for a rental, be aware that just the locals struggle with this as well. Alan lived in Ponaloya, did manage to find a rental first in Las Benitas, then he found another rental in Ponaloya, and in neither case was it really something he was looking for. In one case, uh, he was only renting a room, not a house. Uh, the entire house was far too expensive and much more space than he needed. He really only needed two rooms and made do with one because he could, because it's what he was able to find in a great location, um, and then moved to Ponaloya, found a house that the physical house worked pretty decently, but it was in an area off beach and ended up with uh, like swampland behind it and had a lot of mosquitoes. His answer, move to Leon and he's much happier. It's not that hard to get to the beach. And if you're gonna be here for a while, getting a moto is not a big deal. It's not that expensive and you can sell it when you go to leave and recoup most of your cost. And if you're saving that much money, it easily justifies it. So there's answers, but you need to think outside the box if you want to live on the beach in Nicaragua in most of the locations. The exception to this is San Juan del Sur, of course, where it has a much larger population and the only really large village that is multi-streets deep up against the water. San Juan del Sur is very unique in this way, and that's what makes it so popular because the village is actually against the water uh, and it's a much larger village. There is a lot of apartments and houses in that zone. Some of them are on the water. Not really. None of them are on the water without going outside San Juan proper, but they can be extremely close to the water. Uh, they can be just a few blocks away, but it's different. In Las Panitas and Ponaloya, you're always talking about on the road with the beach, either on the sand or across the street. In uh, San Juan del Sur, you're always talking farther away, but you have many streets going back that you could be on that are very close to the water, but not on it. And it's a little bit different. So in one case, it's you want you're only able to get something essentially on the water or maybe one street back for just part uh, a little bit of Ponaloya and a little bit of Las Panitas. Uh, but in San Juan del Sur, every inch of the village has many streets behind it. And so that's how they're able to get that population density so close to the water. Thanks for joining me. Do all that stuff. Like and subscribe. I know we did that earlier, so I'm trusting that you did that. I'm not going to repeat it now. I have faith in you. You're going to make this channel grow. Thank you so much. I will see all of you tomorrow.